Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I want to welcome you back to the channel. Well, we've got a rare treat for you here, guys. What we're looking at is the Beretta 84 BB. It's chambered in 380. It's kind of an unusual design, especially if you're somebody that's familiar with Berettas. If you don't know much about the older Berettas, this is actually lacking one of those features that you typically associate with uh, modern Berettas, okay? But what you need to know about this Beretta is that it is on loan to me from SS Pawn out of Lexington, Nebraska. Guys, I want you to give SS Pawn a call for all of your firearms needs. Now, this firearm is owned by Stan, uh, the owner of SS Pawn. This comes from his private collection. And Stan has loaned me this firearm to bring you guys a cleaning video and a range test and again the, their their store does support my channel by providing me with firearms that can bring you guys that material so let's support them all right so now the cleaning is going to be pretty much a standard fare if you've ever checked out my cleaning videos before i try to keep it simple it's something you can do definitely on a budget if you need to you just want some cotton swabs any kind of a cleaning rod you know typically if you buy like a, a, a multi-piece cleaning kit you're going to get a multi you know segment cleaning rod you would just use the first section of it this one came with a gun that i got a long time ago a firearm and i can't remember exactly which one but I use that cleaning rod all the time. Some basic uh, cleaning brushes, these work with 9 or 40. Uh, some cut up uh, cotton t-shirts that have a little bit of CLP on them. I'll be exclusively using CLP for this clean, um, mainly because I, when it comes to bluing, I really feel like I get a nice, deep, good clean out of CLP, although again, I am uh, eyeing fr uh, frog lube and that's something I'd like to try out in the future. And some cleaning brushes if necessary, okay? First of all, let's go ahead and make sure that this firearm is un unloaded. So we'll go ahead and take that marker out, that little stand. Okay, we'll push the button to eject the magazine. Okay, check the chamber. Uh, one thing I really noticed about this particular firearm, I know this isn't a tabletop review, but man, this is really a tight pinch when you're trying to, to cock the slide and you're trying to charge that first round uh, compared to a full-size Beretta. So, I mean, the, the stippling aren't, I guess you can say, the, the uh, marks in the slide, they're, they're very aggressive and they work, but you really got to pull back tight because it does have a tight spring on it. But really, to take this apart, it's not that hard to do. So we just pull back, okay? Very simple. Uh, now, this is kind of the opposite of what you would do on a 92 um, FS Sort of, it's on the other side. So you're gonna press this little uh, button right here. Okay, you see it right here just up to the top left of the trigger. And when you do that, that's going to allow you to pull down the slide release mechanism. Okay, when you do that, the slide is under a little bit of pressure. So just make sure you got that pointed in a safe direction. Uh, flip the release button down, release lever down, and then let go. And you can simply remove the slide. Okay, absolute piece of cake. I mean, check out the the build on this thing. This is really cool. I mean, it does. You know, obviously, it's got that that kind of traditional Beretta look to it. You've got just uh, two segments of of rails. Um, all I'm guessing this is probably steel. Maybe it was an aluminum alloy. I'm not sure. Um, I believe this is called the Cheetah model, if I'm not mistaken. And when we get the gun finally reassembled, we'll kind of show you something that makes this uh, pistol somewhat unique to the Beretta line. Now, I don't know if the original 92s or 92S models were lacking in a decocker, but that's something that this one does not have. It does have a safety. You can keep it cocked and locked, kind of like a 1911. And that is kind of cool. I love the wood grips on it. And uh, we'll do a quick little comparison of this and the uh, 92FS Inox Compact while I still have it here. And I just got done doing a cleaning video on that particular firearm. So let's go ahead and set that off to the side. We'll just do a full disassembly and then we'll go ahead and clean the firearm, okay? Uh, to take out your guide rod, I'm guessing this is not a captive guide rod and spring, so it's gonna be under constant pressure. Yes, that's correct. Make sure that you just gently pull back. It'll come right off. You've got a nice, uh, almost full length guide rod, okay? And a, a decent spring there. Uh, looks like it's seen maybe a little bit of wear. I don't know. The firearm itself is, is really not that dirty, but you can definitely see some wear markings on it and stuff, and, and that's fine. Now, this one is lacking that lug that you tend to see on a lot of the other uh, 92 model bread. And I know this is not a 92 series, but just to kind of tell you how that works out. So, all right, let's go ahead and shoot a little bit of CLP down the barrel. We're going to let that marinade and start to take out any deposits that may be in there. Okay, you got that all taken care of. Let that run down there. And what that'll do is start to break up the carbon so it makes it easier for us to clean. And again, this one is chambered in 380. Uh, let's go ahead and wipe off our, our magazines all the way around. And again, you'll be surprised with the amount of residue that you get on those when you do so. Again, you don't want them oily, just a nice little protective coat. And you can, you know, take them apart if you want to and clean them. And there's there's videos on that. We're not going to do that today. We're just going to focus on the firearm, on the firearm itself. Interesting, this is not, this particular magazine has almost like a parkerized or an anodized finish on it. It's definitely much more, almost like frosted. Uh, it doesn't have that shiny blue like the, the rest of the firearm or this particular magazine has. Okay, we'll grab another patch here. 
Okay, this may be the original magazine that came with the gun. The bluing on it matches the slide uh, for the firearm itself. I mean, it's got a very unique bluing. It's almost kind of a marbling the way that it's aging, which looks beautiful on this particular firearm. Okay, we'll go ahead and get those magazines out of the way. All right, we'll just go ahead and take uh, another CLP soaked patch and go ahead and just wipe off the guide rod that all cleaned off. You know, I might have had a mag or two put through it um, before Stan picked it up at the pawn shop. Or I don't know exactly, but um, we are going to take this out for range test, and I am looking forward to it. I've owned several 380s. Just uh, unfortunately, I moved them all out of my collection before I started doing YouTube videos. I had a, a Taurus 738 at one point. Oh, let's see. I've had two others off the top of my head. I can't remember what they are, but I know that it had three total. Okay. Uh, the lower, yeah, I want to go ahead and wipe that off with a CLP soaked cloth. Okay, we'll go ahead and just wipe, start to wipe everything off. And I like to take, you can, you can go through with a Q-tip if you want to and do a lot more uh, fine detail work. I usually do that. The second time I do a range test, sometimes I'll do it the first time if I got time. Well, let's definitely, let's take that uh, guide rod and just, well, hang on one sec here, guys. Let's go ahead and get a cotton swab and put some CLP on it. Very, very narrow to get down to this area where the release mechanism is. Okay, so... Let me get down in there and you can see that that is definitely dirty. And again, when you go through your firearm with a Q-tip, you'll be amazed at uh, the, the amount of crud that'll come out on it. Although this one's really in good shape. This one's really, really nice. It's not bad. It's a cool little gun. Uh, I looked them up on Gun Broker today and this is, oh, June 26, 2017. They sell for about $437. There's two of them for sale for this exact same model, the, the 84. There's also the 85s, and honestly, I can't tell you, I don't know what the difference is between the two. Uh, it's always a good idea to, to wipe out your mag well. Okay, you can spray that out with some REM oil if you want to. It just kind of, sometimes you start to get a buildup in there that you want to watch out for. Make sure you get your ejector wiped off so you're good to go there. Hopefully I don't mess up any of the terminology of these parts. But the, the, the heft and the size of the grip, the pistol grip, is definitely something that caught me off guard. It's, it's not, there we go, we'll go ahead and set that off to the side. Uh, let's go ahead and work on the barrel now, okay? Uh, we'll go ahead and just give the barrel a general wipe off. I like to wipe off the barrels on the outside before I clean out the inside uh, and get all that powder off of them so they're a little bit less messy to handle and deal with. That notch in there, you definitely want to get your wipe in there. Not much of a feeding ramp, I can tell you that. Is there, yeah, there's a little bit more on the lower of the firearm itself. But uh, usually you get a much more aggressive feeding ramp on your more modern firearms. Okay, we'll go ahead and take the uh, soft bristle brush and just run that through a couple times. Apologize if I'm pegging the tripod here. I'm working in close quarters. So Okay, then we'll take the nylon brush and just run that through a couple times. Okay, barrel cleaning is a piece of cake. Once we scrubbed it out with those brushes, uh, just go ahead and take your cleaning rod and just run that through a couple times. This is not too dirty. I mean, we did give it a pretty good scrub and it's been soaking for a while, so yeah, definitely. Okay, so again, you wanna get that done too, all right, and then we'll go ahead and continue with the uh, disassembly and cleaning process. Go ahead and take a look at that. Yeah, it's got really strong rifling in it still. Barrel looks great. Nice and clean. All right, cool. All right, uh, let's go ahead and give that one last wipe off on the outside. And then, like I said, with older guns, I don't know what it is, with these all metal guns that have the heavy bluing and a lot of steel, I tend to use more CLP and less REM oil. Although you really could REM oil the lower if you want to. Um, it really wouldn't be a big deal, so. Oh, and uh, slide time. Okay, we'll go ahead and just wipe out the inside of the slide with some CLP. Definitely gonna need to take uh, cotton swabs to this. And something I forgot to show you in the 92FS video, you can take a brush to the face where your striker is right here if you want to and uh, scrub that off a little bit. I think we'll do that. We'll take a small brush, put a little, just a little, little dab of CLP on there, kind of wipe off the excess, and then just go ahead and scrub it down a little bit. Yeah, you can see it's taken off a little bit of, of a build up there. Just get that wiped off quickly so it doesn't run in the hole where the striker is. Go ahead and wipe off the bottom. It's, it's, you know, this one's a little dirty. It's not bad. I mean, it's, it's definitely as easy to clean up. I don't know how, how much carbon fouling the 380 round really produces. Although it's interesting, this gun is marked um, 9 millimeter short backslash 380, so that's cool. I guess I've never really thought of the 380 as a 9 millimeter short, but that would make sense. 
should probably know that, but I'm, I'm not much of a, a caliber expert, to be honest with you guys. Uh, let's go ahead and take another Q-tip and put a little bit of CLP on it here. And we're going to use that to run through the area where the guide rod goes, because you don't know how clean that this particular part has been. Okay, it's not bad. Kind of wipe out the inside. This little barrel ring here. You know, you, you definitely see the strong connections between th this and like your 92 series. Okay, obviously, you know, same company, duh, but not bad. Okay, we're gonna put a little more CLP in this area where these channels are. Right here towards the back of the striker. Nothing excessive, just a protective coating. And you know, it'll make it easier for you to clean the gun when you're done at the end of the day at the range. Okay, now what we want to do is one last little shot of CLP. <clears throat> now you can go lighter on these oils if you want to. If you're going to be storing these guns for a long time, you don't have to necessarily goop them up. But uh, sometimes it's a good idea to make sure that they're adequately cleaned. Oh yeah, that's a little bit coming out of there, isn't there? Yeah. For me, it's always a lot of fun cleaning firearms. I really like the, the disassembly and the reassembly process. Even though some guns can be more of a pain than others, uh, it is kind of fun just to kind of check out your investment and so on. Although I did not buy this Beretta, but uh, it is pretty cool. Well, it's got some heft to it, definitely. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, begin the process of reassembly. It's not that tough to do. It's just exactly what we did for the disassembly, but in reverse. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put the barrel back in now that it's been cleaned off. You can give it one more coating of oil if you need to. It's up to you. You don't want to go too crazy on it, but unless you got a protective coat. Okay, we'll go ahead and put the guide rod back on. I'm assuming now these sides look about the same. You should be okay. Okay, and go ahead and put that guide rod back in. Now, again, because it's not captive, you want to be very careful with that. Just don't let go of it. You don't want it to launch off the, uh, off the barrel. And on this firearm, let's check this real quick here. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to push that through even further, aren't we? Okay, now once you get that pushed back in, there's a little tiny ridge here on this lug where the rim, I guess you could say, of the uh, guide rod is gonna rest. And if you do it properly, it should stay in place. You're gonna be really careful with that. So it's gonna look like from the, from the front there, from the side should be level. If it's at any kind of an angle at all, you know you don't have it done correctly. Okay, we got that all taken care of now. All right, let's go ahead and uh, reattach the lower to your upper, okay, the bottom of your pistol with the slide. I know I use a lot of AR terms when I do this. Go ahead and put the two pieces back together. Now on this one, you know, on your 92s, you've got the, the lever on the uh, left-hand side. It's easy for you to actuate with your thumb. On this one, I tend to hold it just like this. I'm gonna pull back, and then I'm gonna use my thumb just to flick the switch back, okay? That way it'll lock back into, into place, I believe, you have to push this button at the same time. Okay, I don't know if that's in focus. So you push that button and then push with your thumb. There you go. And then let go and you're all set. Okay, go ahead and check. Make sure we're empty. Okay, functionality test, pull the trigger. Good to go. Let's check that reset. Oh, that's nice. Very, very short reset. Look at that. Now, on this gun, okay, you get it cocked and locked. You're ready to go in single action. You could very very carefully pull back on the hammer pull the trigger and then release but it's gonna it could slip out of your fingers you know possibly go off i don't recommend you do that um so again once you chamber around you are cocked and locked you then push up on your safety which is ambidextrous by the way and it won't fire i i i, I could trust this design in a holster if i am trained with it me personally, I guess I wouldn't be 100% comfortable with it because if this would accidentally slip off and boom, uh, you know, whatever. You carry however you want to, but uh, yeah. So I don't know, that's a little bit crazy. So, and you can lock it like this, but again, without having any kind of a, unless I'm missing it, but I'm not seeing any kind of a, no, no decocker mechanism whatsoever. That is an interesting design, very interesting design because I guess, you know, you could drop it safely and then go into a double action mode if you want to. So anyway, I just wanted to show that to you. Oh, it's got a nice light trigger pull. Uh, real quick, let's just do a little comparison of this, the uh, the grip itself, whoops, with the uh, 92 FS. A little bit slippery, isn't it? Okay, we got a towel down to prevent anything from happening to the firearms. Okay, let's check that out. I mean, just overall, 
you know, the 92FS is really, it isn't much longer when you take out that magazine because the magazine is this whole portion down here in the bottom. But the point is I have basically the exact same purchase on the firearm right here. I mean, it feels almost identical the amount of, of, of grip I can put on this uh, to the 92FS. So I'll cover that when I talk about this in the uh, tabletop review. We'll get into the, some of the features and so on. I will double check and see, but I am not thinking that there's any kind of decocker on it. Maybe it was made that way for a reason. I'm not sure. Maybe where it was issued, it was carried without one in the chamber. It's really hard to tell. So anyway, guys, that is it. That is the disassembly and cleaning and uh, dropping of parts on the uh, Beretta 84 BB. Again, standard SS Pawn, I want to thank you for loaning me this very cool pistol. And uh, we'll take care of it. We'll get it out to the range, put a few rounds through it, see how it performs. And looking forward to shooting some 380. It's been a while. And yeah, I think it'll be a lot of fun. So guys, I want to thank you for checking out my channel today. Um, you can follow me over on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I'm also over on gunchannels.com with the Ordinary Average Guy Gun Channel. Uh, you can find me on Caliber Corner on that particular website or the Ordinary Average Guy Gun Channel. And finally, you can support me over on patreon.com. Uh, my account is uh, patreon.com backslash travisp11. If you want to become a patron of the channel and support my channel so I can keep bringing you videos, I would really appreciate that. And I think that's about it, guys. So I want to thank you for watching me today. Please like or subscribe. Okay, I want you guys to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, guys, have a great week. Bye-bye.